Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper here. Well, you are about to see the challenge that I was facing. The way I had the cage set up just didn't support some of the new material that I'm getting from the cell phone tower guys. Here's my challenge. First of that green bin on the fire. How to reconfigure the shark cage that was originally laid out to support a lot of computers coming in to now support a mix of a lot of heavy material and a lot of computers coming in. Well, here's what I decided to do. I appreciate your comments down below. Well, the new shark cage layout is working very nicely. We have a little bit of an office space up here towards the front now. And then we come right back to our heavy work area heavy items and you can see I've taken the metal framework that I got from the cell phone tower company and I built myself a nice rack there using these cargo pellets right now for decking until I find something else to use there but it very comfortably holds a bunch of bins uh, they're nice and deep and when I do eventually get my own forklift that might even be a convenient way to get stuff on and off. I don't know, we'll see, because this this is in the way if I'm gonna use a forklift. Uh, but anyway, it's working really good for right now. Um, and it puts me right where the guys from the cell phone tower company can come in here where the shark mobile is located. And they can just drive their forklift down the deck and then over to where the pallet, uh, I mean the weighing station will be. Now, right now I have my smaller scale here. We have outgrown this scale and this piece of pallet material represents not very well <laughs> um, what's going to be the new floor scale. I've got a 48 by 48 uh, that I'm ordering today that will be coming in uh, legal for sale, industrial, 5,000 pound cap capability, that kind of stuff that's going to go in here. Uh, over here where we have the genie lift will be the future forklift storage parking kind of, I don't know, we'll see. We'll figure that one out. You can see I've got a stack of computers here waiting on, waiting on me. I fell a bit behind while I was doing all the rearranging and stuff and so we're scrambling to catch up. The computer breakdown area uh, is very much like it was at the other end, only it is relocated aft in the space now. And a few changes that I did, some improvements based on my experience from the other arrangement. So down here now, I've instead of having gold connector ends here that can all go in one bin, I now have pretty common kind of processors that I find, right? So green and brown fiber, black fiber, pinned P4s, uh, the gold corner BGAs, the pinless CPA, uh, CPUs, and then the batteries that will have to get collected and taken into a transfer station. These are the, uh, what Ben refers to as copper stacker type heat sinks. Eventually I'll process those. Uh, we have the uh, charging cart work area with tools that are ready to go. I've uh, been finding some graphics cards that I have to look up and see if those are going to be sellable. And then as I find uh, RAM or uh, hard drives or things that are potentially sellable, they get staged here. Uh, we have the other RAM and stuff that would be sold in here still. There's the station for the higher end the i-series and the ceramics so that all just moved over here now instead of having a tall racking arrangement i have decided to go with half racks 
and take advantage of the space for some more functionality. So I've got the bins for the hard drive boards, low grade, high grade, CD-ROM boards. We've got the hard drives up here with and without boards. We're going to be able to, uh, once we get final organization set up here, we'll have a place for uh, laptops and gaming. We'll have a place for the server boards and the multi-socket boards and the large socket boards and the things that have to get separated properly for being sold to boardsort.com. And then I have still kept this taller rack here as a place to have bins uh, for when I'm processing things. We're still going to work this out a little bit. There's, you know, a few little things that are that are presenting themselves that I have to work through yet, um, but we're getting there. It's, you know, we're a 90 plus percent solution. The green cart is where I stack the empty shelves. And when that's full, I have a truckload ready to go. This is going to be the packing area. So I have a nice bench here for packing stuff up. And then I've got all the boxes that I save or find and save uh, for use because I hate buying brand new boxes just to send them off to someone else. All right, we, uh, we have the wire stripper. That's not where I'm gonna strip the wire, but that's just a convenient place to put it when I'm not stripping the wire. When I am gonna strip wire, it's very easy to just uh, roll it out and strip some wire and then move everything back in again. Refreshment area and the wonderful microwave from Mrs. Shark so that I can reheat lunch now. Uh, there's the area for staging things that are sellable type items. Uh, pay no attention to the boards in the boxes that are down here. Those are just temporarily stored there whilst I finish up the organization. All right, once I get settled in, I'll be able to make a decision on how much of the wood rackage I need to keep. I need to get some uprights for the wire shelving that I found. Uh, I've got plenty of it now. I just need to get some uprights. And you can see I'm making good use of the wire rackage that I have for things like servers, unusual electronics, monitors, uh, power supplies, small form factor PCs. So the stuff that's not a classic kind of PC that is gonna go through quick breakdown gets over here until I get to it. Uh, we found two very interesting oldies that actually power up. So I want to get some cables and monitors and stuff and plug these in and, and run some tests and see if these are actually functional. Um, I do have a power cable and when I plug them in and push the button, I hear them spinning up. So those might actually be some functional oldies. How cool would that be? And then we just have staging area for materials that are getting ready to go. You can see some of the big stuff that the cell phone tower guys are bringing in to me. These things are heavy. I mean, they're heavy. <laughs> so I also need to find out from the uh, yard that I take my ferrous material to uh, if there's a better price point for these if I keep them separated from the general shred. Uh, similar to keeping the autocast separated from the general shred. Hopefully you can see that this has some efficiency potentials for me because I can wheel the computers down here, stage them and break them down and then bring the lighter weight empty shells back up. The heavy material from the cell phone tower guys comes in. Uh, if it's one pallet, they can go ahead and put it right on the scale for me. If it has to be processed or separated or stuff, they can stage the pallets uh, or they can leave the stuff closer up to the front. And when I get my forklift, I can stage the pallets, process the material, weigh it out, and then store it. But that way I know what they've brought me because I am I pay them now. We're, they're treating me like a scrapyard. So the material comes in, I weigh it. And then at the end of the month, I give them a reconciliation report and pay them out. And that's been a lot of fun because we've been paying more and more every month since we've started doing business with them. As in, they're bringing me more and more stuff. So I'm paying them more and more money. And I am making more and more money, which is a good thing. 
All right, well, here's a classic example of the way the new system is working. They just dropped off this pallet load of pipe. And uh, it's a pretty heavy pipe. Pretty heavy pipe. And yeah, we'll get it weighed in. I'll let you know what we're dealing with here. All right, well, we are loaded. I don't think I'm going to make the yard before they close today, so this will be a tomorrow thing. I know that there are some of you out there that don't have the best working relationship with your yard, and, and that's really unfortunate. I, I'm very lucky because the folks that I work with at the local yards are really good. Uh, for instance, I texted them a picture of the HMS that I had in the back of the truck, and the manager texted back and suggested I take it to another one of the yards in town that specializes in steel and has more categories and pays better for the HMS. So I'm at that yard. I've actually unloaded already. They have an interesting system. You come in on one scale. You see the guy getting out to go get his ticket. After you unload, then you go back out on another scale. And in my case, after I got my outweight, I went around and registered the company, so I'm all set up with them. They're a little more inconvenient than my other two yards, but they pay pretty well for the HMS, so it's definitely where I'll be going. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It's a little round icon in between the two links taking you to more Shark Scrapper videos. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.